So here's a simple test you can run on a Bosch two-wire uh, idle control valve. The three wires are si similar, but not exactly the same, and we're just talking about the two wires today. Uh, what I've got is a 12-volt uh, power supply. Uh, we could dial it up, but it's at 12 volts right now. We've got a PWM controller. This specific model is a ZK PP2K. It's super common. You can buy it just about anywhere. Amazon, AliExpress, it's like $10. It's a great diagnostic tool to have around. So uh, if you've uh, got an extra 10 bucks hanging around and you've got some fuel injection, uh, it's, a, it's a nice little thing to have. Uh, I have mine set for 500 Hertz, which is the 0 0.500 and 60% duty cycle. Uh, this information is from the Saab factory manual. The idle control valve is 500 hertz. Uh, it does not talk about the duty cycle, but we know some stuff about it, and we can get into that in a sec. And then this is a Bosch two-wire idle control valve. It's similar on a ton of cars. This particular one is from a 1992 900 turbo, but you'd find similar ones on uh, Saab 9000s, uh, BMWs, Volvos, uh, early um, uh, other Saab cars like the new Gen 900. Uh, they're all pretty similar. If it's a, a two-wire Bosch valve, uh, it, it probably works exactly the same. Uh, the nice thing about this particular uh, uh, PWM controller is that it has an on and off button. So right now it is off, and I can uh, see that because it doesn't say out on it. So this valve right now is basically unpowered, and you can see the resting position of the shutter. Uh, I'm going to leave the camera here and turn the power on, and you can see exactly what happens when I do that. The valve snaps open. Um, right now, it's in about its most open position, so uh, you can see I am at 60% uh, PWM. Uh, I can increase that a little bit, and you can see the valve click open a little more, and I'll decrease it. We're back down to uh, 60, and I'll move it quite a bit. We're about down at 50, 40. And uh, at about 40% PWM, it is in its most closed position. It never will fully close under normal circumstances, but the ECM can. So right now I'm at 25% PWM, and this thing is super tight right now. Uh, I'm going to turn the PWM off with the off button right here, um, and you'll see it snap back to its default position. Saab says that this will cause the car to idle at about 1200 RPM, and that's basically a function of the engine's displacement. So if you had a much smaller motor, it might, uh, it'll pass the same amount of air, so it'll idle a little bit higher. If you have a bigger motor, it may not pass enough air, and it might idle lower. So that's probably, I don't know this factually, but it's probably what separates one part number from another is what its uh, fail-safe position is. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the power back onto the valve. And uh, so now it's at 25% PWM. You saw it closed more fully. And I'm going to open this back up. Uh, we're at 35, 45, uh, 55, 65, 75%. So the nice thing that I'm seeing in this valve is that the uh, shutter has very smooth movement. As I shrink it back down, it closes absolutely beautifully throw it back up, it opens perfectly. So this is a good valve. Um, I could count on this to idle my car correctly. If I saw a different behavior, uh, it getting stuck or not moving smoothly, I would have some concerns about its ability to work properly. Um, I happen to pull this off a running car, so I, I do know it works, but I wanted to illustrate how it should look um, uh, for somebody who wanted to test themselves. This whole setup uh, costs like a hundred bucks or something like that. You don't even need the 12 volt power supply, uh, this guy right here. You could use a car battery. You can really even use a nine volt battery. Uh, the thing we can see from this, uh, just as a side note, is that uh, at, uh, well, let's actually go ahead and increase this back up to uh, 75%, the valve fully open. So at 75% of 12 volts, I'm using about nine volts. So uh, a nine volt battery would probably be enough to run this test. At 75%, uh, we would be at 100% on a nine volt battery, uh, approximately um, rounding and, and roughening things up. Uh, so we'd get pretty close. So you don't have a 12 volt battery, a nine volt battery could work, but obviously uh, if you're testing fuel injection, you've probably got a 12 volt battery around. Um, hope this helps anybody uh, who's struggling figuring out if their idle valve is working right. Uh, the final note that I wanna say is one thing that we also know from this is that running this at 75% PWM on 12 volts, so approximately nine volts to the coil, this thing is fully open. And this is one of the reasons why you do not want to plug a 12 volt battery in directly to one of these motors. 
uh, or these idle control valves with 12 volts applied uh, directly to the idle valve you could burn out the coil uh, if it sat there long enough so if you just touch it real quick and it snaps open and closed the only thing you know at that point is that it can move to its extremes um, but what you really want to find out is this uh, super smooth movement uh, to be sure that it will control idle uh, correctly. I uh, hope this helps and uh, take it easy.